flooded, bro. And there were cops there, and they were, like, just pulling up. And I was like, yo, is the other side of the stop flooded? And he... But what What did you just... Dude, I don't... I, dude, it's a I Mac can't do thing. these things. I don't know. It's Mac. It's, like, built into the Mac. Alexa camera. on. Like... <laughs> Watch this one. Wait. Dude, what? That one does that. This one does something else. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> All right, we're here. Welcome back to Real Dopes. I'm George. With me is Ian. And uh, as always, we're going to try to make your Sundays a little brighter, talking about film and whatever else we think is cool along the way. <laughs> I mean, you know, we've got our drinks ready. We've got our uh, lack of sleep built up. And here we are. Hey, what LaCroix do you usually go with? Uh, dude, I'm a big uh, apricot fan. Ooh, is that the orange one? Yeah, it's one of the orange ones, one of the orangey flavors, uh, but I love it. So light and nice. But right now I got myself a beach, a beach plum because I really like they went with a beach uh, theme on the can and the and everything. It's just real nice. OK, so it's apricot, but it's like a special one. This is beach pl beach plum, but apricot is my other favorite. OK, I usually just go pretty, pretty basic. I'll go like something uh, like uh, the pamplemousse. Oh, the pamplemousse is a good one, or the lime is always great. Yeah, but I'm still also just, I'm just a sucker also for uh, just water and coffee. I feel like on set, I don't want to get a LaCroix. Yeah, really? Yeah, I don't know. You have your days, but I'd rather just, just give me a, a warm, like, give me a room temp water I can just chug and keep going. Oh, you're wild. <laughs> I, I'm not on the room, uh, dude, I'm a fucking cold drink guy. I'm a cold drink Ooh. and a hot drink guy. Like, room temp doesn't. I don't know, something, maybe it's because I'm from the South or something, I don't know, like, there was ice and everything growing up, so, like, I never had a room temperature drink until I was, like, an adult. I am literally the complete opposite. I will always go room temp for water, and I will always go cold or iced for other drinks, like, iced tea, iced coffee. Wow. Yeah. Dude, something about, something about the warmth of a, of a nice warm coffee, just, like, fucking settles my soul i really love i really love a hot i've grown to like a hot drink a lot more in my older years is that whenever for you because like for instance you know you know new york in the winter definitely and then in the summer too like it just depends on like what i'm doing if i'm like at home or like in a car if i'm not like outside physically mm. I'll pro i'm probably gonna go hot i used to go cold all the time but Going hot now, baby. Yeah. Changing it up, you know? Film boy 24, Ooh, yeah. hot boy summer. <laughs> <laughs> healthy boy, healthy boy, healthy mental health. That's yeah. that's where we're at. Mental dude. health. We're no longer so, putting a mocha in our coffee. It's just pure black. We're dude, we're we're starting fresh. You, you can't you can't get to Nirvana with mocha in your coffee, brother. <laughs> you need to be drinking straight black. That get black coffee gets you closer to God. Yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I, it, I think it's so funny because like i mean obviously coffee is like a universal thing like it's like the staple for you know whatever to get your day going but it is so funny how different everyone and everything will run if everyone doesn't have their coffee before crew call yeah 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 <laughs> it's like especially on your big boy shoots i feel like you get some grumpy fucks oh yeah 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 like especially like I'm saying that just just for each person, you know. Yeah. Especially like when you're on location moves and things, and it's like, Crafty's not set up before the call, like and like five people are waiting for the coffee, and it's just like, what do you expect? They got here the same time as you, but now they're like, you can yeah. tell the whole attitude is like, well, how are we supposed to work? <laughs> yeah, you want me to pay them overtime so that you can fucking have your coffee, you big piece of poo poo pants? Yeah, I remember. That's how I feel. I'm like balancing overtime with all that shit. I'm always the one bringing shit early so I don't have to pay anyone overtime. Yeah. I remember there was a show I had where um, the because of that type of circumstance, Crafty had like an hour pre-call. But then very quickly, the UPM is just like, this can be 30 minutes. Like, what are we doing here? You're here before people are even parking. Just like, here's the coffee. Like, for who? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Production. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the P- the truck dra- the PA and the fucking yeah. uh, P- and the AD. Yeah. The person who dropped off the uh the football and the paperwork. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the people directing the people to park. Yeah, yeah. Sitting there waiting for people to show up. Oh, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's kick things off with a little bit of our weekly work recap. Dude, I fucking worked this week. Hey! hey. We do things. We don't just talk on podcasts. Well, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. You think I look this ugly for no reason? You think I can make a living here, man? I'm ugly, bro. I need a fucking job. <laughs> The best part too is I know you can play that uh guess my job grip nope next <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like fucking the one that I do is like the one that is the last one you'd expect but like especially dude I've got so I've got these um these are my favorite like work pants they're Carhartt like tan ones and they got like oil stains on them and shit I've gotten them <laughs> I've gotten the seat I've gotten the seat fully re-sewn in because I blew it out Bro, you can look at the look at the holes, bro. Oh, okay, but still, all right. <laughs> Dude, I blew them out so hard, I just got them fixed, and I got them fixed with black. I didn't have any of the the. Bro. You're, uh, you're making rookie you, moves because what you got to do is just talk to the costumers and be like, "Are we cool enough where like you can just sew this?" Bro. I don't have, I don't work with those people. But whoever. I, work, I drive the truck. But whoever. I drive the truck. <laughs> you just make friends with them. And then like a week later, like, hey, if I give you this, can you like take it home over the weekend or something? Like, dude, I paid the fucking guy down the street 10 bucks and he fucking fixed me up good. He did, dude, he, I did like four pairs of pants for 40 bucks. <laughs> I was like, this is great. And now I got a new friend that does my dry cleaning. Not that I dry clean very much, only after weddings. But so this week I was um I was coordinating for a little porches music video. It was fucking fun. Hey. Got to hang out with my good friend Ben Carey and a bunch of people. Got to meet some new got to make some new friends. It was fucking fun. It was like real um it was pretty fast paced. I came in like a day before. And just like clean shit up, tighten things up, figure out the meals and all that shit. Okay. So that's that's where I like to be is sort of in the moment. Like mm. the like I like kind of like the last minute grind. I like chaos. <laughs> I like chaos. It wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> uh, sometimes like I'll be so fucking amped up that I'll drink a coffee and I'll be too amped up. Like so, something about my brain. Oh, yeah, I yeah. can like really I can barely get up in the morning on an off day. But like on set, like when I'm on set and things are happening last minute, I'm like fucking wired. Yeah. Um. So you can't. Dude, wait, um. Great. Sorry. So you came in as AD. Uh, p- uh, coordinator. Okay. So you coordinating last minute call. Let's come coordinate a music video. So I was brought on really just to be there for the Tuesday shoot, which was in a studio. Which, unbeknownst to me, we were throwing mud on the band on a white psych and uh we didn't put any tarps or anything down so uh me and the pas were cleaning mud off of the psych for like two hours after wrap wait it was, but dude why honestly it well we were showing the floor we couldn't okay, yeah, yeah, really yeah, okay, protect okay. anything it needed to be it and it paid off the shots looked fucking sick and they bought like this really expensive dirt it's like super fine it's like purified so like I think it's safer to like put on people because the grains like don't mm-hmm. fuck up your cornea. Or, or, or you we'll go with it. that. Yeah, sure, sure, maybe. Uh, but it also just looks good. It like when it gets wet, it turns into a really nice mud. And um, cleaning up the psych was so fucking defeating at first, but then we figured out the system, mm-hmm. and I we were like pushing around. We just were wasting paper towels, and we were pushing around. And when it's like brown in front of you and white behind you, it's so. Oh, it's so satisfying, too. Yeah. And then um, after that, they they asked me to come on for the upstate day. We went upstate and filmed at this barn that was full of pigeon shit. Um, but the fucking set deck was sick. It was really fucking cool. And there was a dog nice, named nice. Banjo. Nice. So how how does that work on your end? You're saying so you go on upstate, meaning so like everyone just kind of takes their own car no um in in new york that's the that's kind of the other thing that i was on to was helping coordinate transportation because the producer was la based and um 
transportation here is a big no one has cars like i'd say like fucking 15 to 10 percent of crew have cars so you have to provide transportation which means that you kind of meet there's like this one spot called kellogg's diner that's honestly closed now but um it's in williamsburg it's off of two trains and people just always meet up there it's right by the interstate you just hop on and go upstate okay so they asked me to come upstate like the day before they were going so i didn't take the crew van i rode up the day of the shoot so at like 10 in the morning i rode up for a night shoot so i like left it Left my apartment at 8.30, got to location at 1.30, and then was at location until 3.30. Okay. Wait, so what, what were they already going when you got up there? They were getting started. We rolled up like 30 minutes after the pre-call. It was an afternoon shoot then, you're saying? Afternoon into the night. Okay. Yeah, pre-call was at uh, 1. Okay. And then um, crew call was at 3. Okay. Man... It's always in such a nice feeling when you wake up knowing like I don't have to be there yet. This is normal. But then once you get there, it's like yeah. you're you got you you gotta do what you gotta do, but there is that little bit of like, oh, this means we're here for a while. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's dude, rolling up late like waking up late's kinda nice, but getting your gears turned in later in the day is kinda difficult. Yeah. Cause you're literally doing like the reverse of the world. Like uh, it's such a crazy like if you have a if you're in a circumstance where you can see like the world around you from where you're shooting or parked or whatever, and you're starting to realize like, Oh, it's like people are going home and I'm just kind of like, hi, like, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh dude. Or rolling up to a shoot so early that like people are leaving the bars. Like, like if you shoot ever shoot like downtown or something and you like not downtown LA, but damn like fucking Manhattan, like, and you roll up to like a 4am call on like, I had a 4 a.m. call on a Saturday one time, like right in, um, I guess it was Chelsea. And uh, it was so funny, dude. I got into like two altercations with drunk guys walking around hitting on fucking, hitting on the production department, like the production designer. Yeah. It was weird. It was a weird morning. Oh, man. That's um, cool. How are you doing? What you, what you been up to this week? I'm hanging in there. Um, You know, I haven't been on set this week, you know, it's like every week's better and the same at the same time i think for on the union end of the world you know but uh yeah, yeah. but i have i have an interview coming up this week for something that's starting so we'll see i'm not too sure how yeah. long the show goes i know i'm assuming it's at least two or three months it's just one of those things where it's like i even had friends ask like you know did you like preliminary ask like when's the show start how long is it go and i was like this time no because are you working no it doesn't am, matter yeah am yeah. i working no so if this sounds like a good fit. Let's feel out the interview. Yeah, I just want to stay like, honestly, dude, whenever I really want a job, I don't ask any questions. I like I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. What was that question? Yes. What's oh the rate? Sure. Yeah. Anything for this one for you. Yeah. And it's funny because it's like, you know, with the little pieces of information you have, you know, you have the people who are like, that's cool. And the people who are like, wait, heads up. What? What? You know, this is what it's usually like this and that like are you sure you want to do it i'm just like i like again do you want to just keep sitting at home yeah yeah <laughs> it's like, dude i don't have the choice right now i don't have the liberty to like be like oh i don't like that producer yeah it's like you know not to doom and gloom it but it's like it's just it's not a good situation on the union side you know where it's like it's not just people trying to be dramatic when they say things like you know should I start like questioning my mortgage or where I live or a whole different career altogether? Like there are, everyone's had that thought at some point. Cause you're just like, you're in a rut, but it's like, there are actually the handful that have done it. They're like, I'm out. And it's like, yeah. it's a big deal, you know? So it's like, if people are in that position where it's like, I'm going to move my entire family and livelihood, then why would I even question what yeah, show? Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> Cause it's starting to not feel like a rut. Like this fucking, God, from last year to this year, like I know union side, it's like it's you have something to blame it on. But like it just on the other side, it, like my end, it's just like what's going on? Yeah. Like it's not as much of a blackout, but like I don't know what's going on. Yeah. But I keep what I've heard, like I, I guess like talking to you and other friends as well from the non-union, it's like it's a it's a trickle down kind of situation but it doesn't really make sense why either you know because it's like i i keep hearing you guys know of the work in a 
pretty steady rate, but it's like, it's just significantly dropped in the last like six months, which I feel like has to be correlated to us, but it's also like, why, you know? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't get it. Cause I also work mainly in commercial, like non-union, low budget, under $250,000 commercials. Like fucking that's yeah, whatever. Okay. But so for your interview thing, mm-hmm. is that for a full run? Is what it's it for a full, full run. Show? So like, I can't say much yet, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. And that's the other thing too, right? Like I love being like the day play hopper. Like I've probably said it before, yeah. you know, but it's just like when, when things are normal, you know, it's like five days a week, five different shows. I'm fine with it. It's like, why not yeah. throw me into that chaos? But it's like, you know, we're talking the rut and it's, I can only assume that whenever you're on a full show, you make better connections. Like that's how you get on people's A team rather than the C team. Or like that's how you get to be the second or the first call from someone. Yeah. Whole fucking run. I mean, I think it could all be interchangeable. At least I say that with my own experience, like the amount of calls I've been fortunate to get after day playing. Cause I've been fortunate where a lot of yeah. my day plays turn into like, keep coming back, keep coming back. And then they keep you in yeah. mind. And that that's why I'm like, I love it. But yeah, it's, in terms of being the team dynamic, I guess, yeah, because that's the thing, right? In a way, you almost slightly pigeonhole yourself. Like, oh, I'm going to day play all the time. They know you as the day player. But it's like you spend, yeah. a, you know, three months with them day in, day out, 15 hours a day type of thing. It's like, oh, you know what? Let's do that again. Yeah, exactly. If you leave it, I mean, the 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 ter- one is determined by availability and the other one is determined by, like, you have to charm them. Like, you have to leave a good you have to do good <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah well i guess both you have to do good if you roll up and you're like day of emergency person and you fuck up if you fuck up no one's calling but yeah the lesson here the life lesson here is do good <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> try really fucking hard but don't let anyone know you're trying really hard yeah that's one of those phrases that's uh it can mean a million different things in whatever context kind of like the same way when you like look at someone in the street you good <laughs> you know yeah yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, wow, what are we trying to say here? But, you know, like, do good in life, do good in work. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Live, laugh, love, pray. Exactly. Eat, pray, God, love. Eat, pray, love. That's the motto, right? (laughs) That's what's up. I'm going to put that up on the wall right here next time. I'll see you in Italy, dude. Hell yeah. Let's go get some gorgonzola. Oof. Oh, man. I'm just not really a cheese person. That's why I was like, oof, have fun. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you got you got the you got the gurgle guts yeah. i got the lactose i ain't got no lactose i can't tolerate it the play got me ma Ooh. oh yo that i will say that is the play got me ma the play <laughs> got me oh, I... all right so i'm gonna continue the show by myself no um i can't eat cheese i can't eat cheese Dude, that is one of the worst first world problems on a set, I swear. It's easy just to not have cheese. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Dude, fucking ordering food is, like, my biggest... Catering is my biggest, like, anxiety on set. Oh, yeah, because... Yeah, because on... So for us, yeah, a lot of times it's catering or some walk to thing, unless it's, like, prep lunch being brought to you in the office. But you kind of have... Yeah, your situation's almost always that version. Yeah. I'm always the one choosing. I'm always the one calling it. I'm always the one like, even when I'm not producing, like I just always end up doing it. Yeah. But I've got my caterers now. I got the like, I got Monteron. I got Modern Roots, baby. They kill it. And then I, I can, I've gotten to where I can fucking just call in a catering order really easy. Yeah. I can like make my own little menu and like order tacos for yeah. everyone, and everyone's happy. You know what drives me nuts about that? So like sometimes that happens for us, basically just cheap lot or cheap show situation usually if not it's like you know the select actor wants this type of thing always but like when you have that type of situation especially like i feel for the base camp people where it's like oh i have to do this for the actors but then also here comes some of the office people and such who are thrown in on this and you're dealing with this whole order while also trying to make sure everyone's coming to and from you know the the set with our time schedule and it's like you got to like plan it in a way where it's like the food needs to be here in time, but it has to be cold. And I don't care that you're going to complain, but I'm going to smile. And then, oh shit, something's missing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, individual orders are the bane of existence in general. Yeah. Just individual orders on set are awful. Dude, so we did on the 
the I've never prepared this well for individual orders as I did on the studio day where we threw the mud. Mm. Normally what I do is if we're ordering on the day, if we're just going to do a restaurant order, I'll just look through the menu. I'll pick a chicken option, a red meat option, a vegetarian option. The broad like assortment. I just pick, I make a catering thing and I order it individually and I fucking lay it out and they just choose like it's catering. But because this dude hadn't ever done that, I was just like, all right, cool. I'll do individual orders. And what I did is I like, Looked at the menu. I was like, all right, so I'm limiting the menu that we're choosing from to these three things. And then I like just, and I printed out a piece of paper that had everyone on the crew's name on it. And I like wrote next to everyone's name, like what they ordered and it fucking, and then you just order like five extra things. Yep. Done. Done. Easy. Next. We're living large. (laughs) Next. It's just, it's funny how everyone has their little system everyone's got their system yeah like that's one of the things that's that's cool with our job it's like you know what needs to be done but whatever category or department you know it's like everyone has a different version of how to get there yeah 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 i just saw on the um on the upstate day we had an ad uh the studio day we didn't so like by the end of the day i was kind of cracking the whip yeah because no one else was um but then upstate uh I love seeing AD's schedules because I have my own yeah, schedule yeah, yeah, format yeah. that I use. But it, like, I've been growing like kind of tired of my format. It's like hard for me to read. Yeah, and like, and seeing this produce this uh, AD's schedule, I was like, damn, I'm gonna take that format. Nice. It's like this work. It's hard to see the times, but what was it that like kind of stood out? I guess. So <laughs> this is what mine looks like. So basically everything is in line like no matter the unit like blue is a separate unit um and green is all interiors blue is like exteriors or whatever okay um and then yellow is call time highlighted yellow is lunch so that signifies the middle of the day it was a 10 hour day though um and then but like see and then times are all right here so like the fucking 11 like whatever time to whatever time and then over here is duration. So I have like, just so you can see, that's going to be an hour and a half. Yeah. But what the, like the guesstimate AD, of what we're going for to move on. Yeah. 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 Um, or what just is allowed, you know, like this is what you're supposed to do. Um, and this one doesn't really get emailed out. It just goes, it's above the line. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 What, <laughs> what I'm realizing is more of the standard is having your time slots like on one side. And then you have bigger chunks that are spread out over here. So it's like you have your the width of the chunk display, like helps you visualize the length of time that you have. And then if you've got two teams, you just do two different columns of like section of like chunks. So, you know, like, so you're saying like the, the essential, like the description area, it's like the size of the box kind of gives you like a mental note of like we're going it's allowed more time or allowed less yeah it's more of like for a shooting it's like for to hand to a director and like a dp and be like you can see you have more time for this and less time for this okay but it's like less detailed in the movie this yeah. is almost like this is coming from like a producer's mind. right right i need to see everything and i need to know what's going on mm-hmm. the name of the shot on the shot list and it's everything. just another like fail safe type of thing for the above the line of like, this is what we're going for. Cause everyone on set and on the day is going to not care that it's different sizes. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. They don't, but they don't even read it half the time. (laughs) Yeah, no, 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 they don't. Um, this one works for me, but I'm realizing that I kind of like for sharing with people, like I kind of, I'm going to shift the way I do it to being more like the, the side, the way that the other ID did it. Wait, wait, when, what was it that was kind of standing out from his, you want to copy on mine? It's like the action blocks determine where the times are written. And then on that one, the times determine how the how big and spread out the action. Okay. Blocks. I'm not doing a good job describing it, but I think that it's I'm I'm just like it's a different a variation of what you're doing. So you're like, I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it it's a little easier to share. It's simpler, like mm-hmm. it's easier to read with these. I feel like above like directors and stuff will miss details that i want them to catch because it's there's so much there yeah so I, i'm just learning i'm learning it's funny because um this is the part where uh we're like 
This is the part where the the dorkiness kicks in for all of us in the film because we yeah. all have our ver- like we're excited about like organization and paperwork because I do the same thing where it's like I see different call sheets and production reports and I just you know I'm gonna take this and put this and that like if if yeah. I was to pull up my PR template it's basically like seven different PRs merged. Yep, 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 dude. I'm so glad that I don't have to do PRs. That like that shit looks so annoying. I mean, but it's definitely tedious. Like, yeah, there's a huge but you part get of it. Good at it. Yeah, it's there's a huge part great. of it that just should never fall on us, and it does. And you just yeah. kind of suck it up. But yeah, wait, what does that mean? There's certain parts that just shouldn't fall on the ads or production for the in the moment on set crew. Like this shouldn't be part of our wrap out. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it is. So you got to do it. So I have code set up for certain parts because it's like, I'm going to let the computer do its thing. And if it looks pretty good, then that's how I'm going to send that part off because it's someone else's job to supervise and oversee, you know, like the do the uh, the review of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just sort of rough things in. You just like got like a simplified little thing that you put in. For certain parts. Like a formula. On yeah, exactly. Station? Exactly. Formulas. Okay, and, got, it, know, got it, got it. Because like I want, yeah, I still make sure the key parts stand out in each section but you know what i mean like for people who don't know the production reports essentially the let's look back at what we did today that it falls on the remaining ad's and pas at wrap out so you know literally everyone's already going home and you're there for another hour or two yeah because you gotta you call out who got there late who showed up who left at what time yeah like what time did meals show up yeah what time was last man what were time back in when did we finish this shot? When did we finish this? When did we move on? Yeah, the P- the PR is basically just a full on reflection review of like, here's how the day was spent, the work that got done, the money that was probably used and additional <laughs> notes for safety and such. Anything that's pertinent to the, you know, what's going to matter later for any department, even the studio legality sense. All of it's being summed up onto a double-sided sheet reflecting everyone's in and out times, any meal penalties or violations in that su- in that sort, so you get more money. What we shot, how many background, this and that, so on and so forth. It's just a literal it's literally everything that's more of the yeah. office side, but it's it, like, but they need, you know. It's because the people paying everyone are not there. Like they don't get you're taking notes for the people that pay everyone. Yeah. And like and then everyone, you know, so that you can look back and be like, did we really do that? And then it's like, well, this guy said we did. It, it's like the simplest way to put it, I guess, is anyone listening, imagine a more extensive closing report at a bar or restaurant. This, these are the steps that are being done and then what's basically being filed and put away. Tomorrow it's going to get reviewed and you may be asked a question. Yeah. Yeah. And my whole goal is always, I want it to feel as if you never have to ask me a question. Like I try to... Yeah. So to say, dumb it down where it's like, it does, you don't even have to know me, but here's the info. And so like, I even have my emails kind of extensive with like bullet notes when I send it out. Like, I know I probably do a little more than a lot of people do. It's like, you know, helping set an example that that means more work for an extra five minutes of typing, you know, but I do that. So it's like, I'll break down just the sense of like, like, here's where this is questionable or here's what I missed. You know, like, just so, like, you don't even have to ask me the obvious step one questions. You can come in and be like, let's see what he's saying. Oh, I see. And then just continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. And keep going. It's like, oh, that's why he knows this is missing. Like, this was not forgotten. It was like, this is gone. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that might that might just even just be a me thing, because it's obviously kind of self-explanatory. Like, you don't have this time. We probably didn't get it, for example, for like whatever crew member. But I'm like, I'd rather just highlight it, like missing all of cameras times. Like, if you guys want to ask them better. It's better. It's that's the right. That's the good. I'm kind of the same way when I can like make my head do it. I Mm. like do. I like over informing because it like it's just fucking when you really think if you think about it as the person who has to read what you're sending, it's easy to like come up with like, what do I care about? Why would I want to know this? Like, what should I tell them? Yeah. You always kind of need more than what's on the page. But yeah, and then I will say it was kind of funny. Uh, so I had to go help someone real quick. I had to go get something that was, you know, at their car, and they were on one of the lots nearby. So it was kind of nice the other day to just have that quick, like I have a drive on to come onto the Fox lot. Like, oh, like for a split second, this feels normal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, so you weren't working. You just had to go help them out with something. Right. But just that feeling of like, it all comes back to you when you're like, I've been, you know, I've been here before and you go to the check-in gate and this and that, like it just, it was nice. Yeah. You're like, yeah. And it was kind of a cool re like, reassurance too. Cause you know, how I was just saying there are some people being like, it, we have to pack it up. It, it's kind of nice because everyone's had those doubts lately. I guess uni and non-uni. Like everyone's had the thought at least once in the last year of just like, should I be doing this? Is this for me because of the way the world and finances are going? But it, it was yeah. nice to have that little like reassurance for a minute when it's like you're standing on a lot again for the first time in a while. And you're like, you know, I do want to keep doing this. You know what I mean? Like it's like at least you know it's not that factor. Yeah, you're like, like I do like it, and it's still happening, and I think I'll it'll work out. Like, <laughs> yeah, it'll just it's a nice know, feeling. I'll just when we're not recording podcasts, just you know, cry for half the week, and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little, just little cries every once in a while. Yeah, I think you said it off camera. You had a little bit of a rap thing, right? Oh yeah, last night we had a we had a little rap party. Went to um went to the magician in uh the in so i don't know what name just north of houston um houston i guess just sounds <laughs> sure houston Te just north of houston texas <laughs> um and uh yeah it was cool fucking dude brother like one of the guys from brother was there what's he brother happened to be there brother the directors the guy that did that like w those guys that did that like crazy weekend video and like i don't know just type in brother with no vowels um so brother guys were there brother is a brother duo who does a lot of music videos they're not brothers but they just they're direct they're a directing duo they do music videos but their name is brother okay see I, i'm i'm very i'm personally just unfamiliar with anyone who's probably more known for commercial music video yeah 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 but you've seen their shit before. They do like the crazy neon, like they do like lots of like VFX, like glitch, fucking things, okay. things, and fucking lots of neon. But that dude was there, and uh, the fucking producer from Object Animal, who like got me on the job, was there, but he didn't recognize me, so I didn't say anything. And then, uh, uh, yeah, dude, everyone, it was fucking great. It that started. We started at like ten. A night? Like the party started at 10. Yeah. And I was like, bro, like, fuck. I sent I sent the director an email. I was like, yo, how about eight, bro? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I'm busy until 10, dude. And, I, and then I didn't. Dude, I fucking fell asleep on the subway on the way there. Oh, and, uh, oh I missed man. my stop. I missed my stop. And then I, uh, but then I fucking waited for the wrong train. And then it came and I realized that I was waiting for the wrong train. So I walked over and turned and I I checked my phone and turns out I thought I'd missed the train going the right direction mm -hmm. but I got over there and I saw some people that I got off the train with earlier and I was like oh fuck that the correct train hasn't even come yet. So like, it was fine but like nailed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jackpot. And then you hear something about how uh, that that station's actually closed so you're going to have to get off and go around. Dude, it was <laughs> When I went to the train, I go to go down the side of the train stop that I go into, uh -huh. and it was fucking flooded, bro. And there were cops there, and they were, like, just pulling up. And I was like, yo, is the other side of the stop flooded? And he... But what What did you just... Dude, I don't... Dude, it's a I Mac can't do thing. these things. I don't know. It's Mac. It's, like, built into the Mac. Alexa camera. on. Like... <laughs> Watch this one. Wait. Dude, what? That one does that. This one does something else. <laughs> Dude, like... Dude, I did it on a Zoom call with a client one time, and they were like, what? And I was like, I didn't know I could do that. That's weird. I so I was about to say, so I'm hired, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I got there, and then um, I said, I was there for like an hour, and then I was I told a few people that I was going to leave. And then on my way out, I saw my friend sitting by the door and I was like, yo, I thought you weren't even here. And he's like, I've been here for three hours. I don't know why you saying that just made me think of like the setup for every early 2000s, uh, like indie teen type movie. Like 
you didn't know he was there. He was in the corner for three hours. You're walking over him, you know, it's just like you guys talk yeah, for a yeah. minute. Like, and that's crazy. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> He's staring out towards the Brooklyn Bridge. Do you ever miss it? Miss what? Like, just being a kid. <laughs> Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> you want to climb on top of the train? And then the rest. I like, know this yeah. spot where we can be alone. Yeah, and then <laughs> it's like on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> that's the part that's playing at the beginning of the trailer for the movie while you hear like that song Sweet De- De- Disposition playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. it just it's like a montage trailer of like the train goes by, they're running, some guy goes up to them like, "Oh, I'll mug you," you know, like just like, "Oh, look at all the drama yeah. in the city." <laughs> yeah, and then the, the, it's like a voiceover goes, "And that was the summer we lost Andy." Like, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Because the movie has to end with, you know, they're remembering Andy. A death. Andy died yeah, yeah, 10 yeah. years ago, but they're remembering. Now's the moment in Andy's honor. Like, I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to leave New York. <laughs> <laughs> they all get matching tattoos. Like, Yeah. Just that feeling of like, what's the unknown? But we're all going to be okay. <laughs> um, Yeah. Should we, should we cool. like say what's coming next should we what were you planning oh i didn't even do that when we started did i just kind of jumped right in up next we got um max cook coming on he's a non-union sound mixer we're continuing the sound mixer uh vibe um he's an old friend of mine he lives in new york and uh he uh is just a fucking funny guy really great guy um known him pretty much since i moved up here and uh yeah, he's got a he's in an interesting place, just got married and he's uh looking at the you know, his place in the industry. He also has some like uh fun stuff he's done on the side that we'll talk about too. Cool. So we're back and we're back with our friend Max. So um Max and I go back uh fucking to Dream Machine, Dream Machine days. Nice back in nice. like I think I met you in like twenty four. 14 or something yeah yeah i i yeah i knew dylan um from college we actually went to college together lived together for a little bit and so um you know we were pretty close at that point and i was you know his main sound mixer but i i would always make friends with the interns (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah dude like eric eric and all them and yes so if ian told me correctly dragon right drexel dragon yeah what? <laughs> good old mario the dragon all, right <laughs> did you do it all the basketball games with the with the yellow claw yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah. cool are you originally from the philly area i mean you don't have to disclose too much but okay nice Went to Philly, um, school in Philly for four years. Really enjoyed Philly, really liked Philly. Wonder why I left in a lot of ways. But my friend uh, at the time was like, oh, I got a job in New York. So I was like, oh, I'll just go to New York too. And now I'm stuck here. And all the people I went with have left. I'm the last oh, one yeah. left. I'm the, I'm the last man standing. And I, and I can't leave this place as hard as I try. It's funny how that, I feel like that's how it started for all of us coming out of Drexel. It's like, I don't really want to leave here, but am I going to New York or LA? Or even for me, I was like, I don't have any huge desire to live in New York, but I certainly I didn't want to go to L.A. And I, I also was just like, there's work in New York, so I'll just go to New York. I, I, I didn't realize that you get trapped wherever you choose to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forever. Especially yeah, in film. Yeah. I mean, with film, there really are like two places you can live. And they're the two most expensive places in the country. Yeah. But you, yeah. you move there with that... Uh that like 22 year old mentality of just like, yeah. I'll try this out for like two years and everything will be great. Maybe I'll go Absolutely. over there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you like, think... you're not concerned with the fact that you have no income and you're moving to like one of the most, exp- oh I moved to God. park slope. Yeah. <laughs> like that's where I chose to live as a 21 year old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. 20, good 21 year old New York city, <laughs> no income fresh off of yeah. the Obama recession era. Just like, I'm going to go to park slope. Yeah. I think the housing crisis actually helped me out a little bit with my rent, honestly. But yeah, one hundred fucking percent, it did. I had a five-floor walk-up, and it was like five hundred and fifty dollars a month in Park Slope, Uh, and I had a like I lived in a closet. 
I lived in a closet and it was five four walk up, but it wasn't wasn't too bad. But you know, yeah. it's closets cost seven hundred minimum. <laughs> But, but you're right that you do just have this young mentality of like, I work in the film industry, there's no work, I'll take any work. Anything there is to do, I'll do it. And I don't, if it means getting on a train to do a job in Connecticut, like that, my sound equipment down five flights of stairs, that's not a problem. Naive stupidity slash fearlessness to just move to one of these places and just because like, that's what you do, I guess. I think now we're all at an age where it's like, you start wondering like, was that just naive or was that the right move, wrong move? But it kind of is the mindset you had to have to do it, right? Because if you right. had so many reservations, you would just not move. It's so new. Nothing hurts yet. That's the thing is like, when you get older, you just, you, it's, it's much more intolerable. Everything you kind of have to put up with. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you're young, it's, it's, you're, just, you're just happy to be there, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's all new. It's, it's the first it. time it's ever stung. It's like the first time playing paintball. You're like, oh, wow. Yeah, and yeah. then you're like, oh, it's, yeah. it's fine. And then after a while, you get tired of it again. I remember that when I first moved out here. Because it's like, um, you get that call, you know, like, come do this, like, thing, you know, $100 maybe for the day if you're lucky. You know, there's things like, come to the, like, the YouTube spaces stages, which don't, don't really mean shit these days. But back then, you know, you're like 21, 22, like, I'm getting a call. I can go drive for an hour that way and I can go and be in front of this green screen all day at your YouTube place. This is insane. Like, <laughs> I remember when I was uh, super young, I, I met a uh, camera op and he, we were like drinking at the bar at some point and he was just like, yeah, I don't leave my bed for le for more than or for less than two. Sorry, I'm getting that mixed up. I don't leave my bed unless I'm getting paid like two hundred and fifty dollars a day. Yeah. <laughs> 100, 150 yeah. a day to be like a boom operator. Yeah. And I was like, fuck this guy. But like yeah. now, my number is even higher than that. Yeah. Like, well, it's, yeah. It's just like, oh God. <laughs> Once to get a cab to set for that rate. And it's like, it's not so much even about I'm, the point is not to say that one person is doing better than the other. It's just that like it wears on you over time. Oh, and yeah. The value of, of, of the job becomes very different. And yeah. it's nice to think about those younger years when, and, 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 you know, the flip side of that is that sometimes I would get on jobs where I was absolutely not qualified to be there. Uh, yeah. You know, like I would take a, a job covering someone mixing uh, and I was like super young mixing. And like, I think mm -hmm. back to that, there's this one job in particular, I think about me showing up using another mixer's gear and basically having absolutely no idea how wrong I was doing everything on that day. And like, I wonder, did, was the sound on that day just basically unusable? Uh, did I did I mess it up so bad? And that's what happens when you know you're just taking uh, jobs when they're offered to you without yeah. saying like never say no. And yeah. uh, you know there is a, a, a sort of learning curve that you go through. Just you don't even know how stressed you should be about something. Yeah, yeah. Because you're too inexperienced to know. Yeah, yeah. It's like time just kind of puts in perspective your own worth and wealth and i don't really mean that in a like an arrogant yeah like it's, i don't like, like you were saying i don't mean that yeah. like i'm better than anyone as you're spending time doing it you kind of learn like what you excel at and also what you even want to deal with <laughs> you know the price of the pain goes up because the pain <laughs> goes up too like it, it just it, it all becomes a, a different metric of consideration um you know and, and also uh there was times in which I wasn't getting cab fare to set, so I'm like bringing my huge pelican on the subway and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think our friend uh, who also works in the industry uh, said at one point, uh, and I think about it often, uh, your body's like a car and every day you're putting mileage on it, you know? And yeah, going back to yeah. being young, like you don't really think about what you're doing to your body, these small little steps of slicing into your uh your spinal cords uh nice. mileage but in terms of the industry and how you know you feel invincible when you're younger and then once you hit like 35 we're all broken pieces of yeah your bones stop uh, healing themselves after like 30 35 yeah you know you gotta take a little dash of milk with your black coffee you know 
I was about to say, and then the uh, since you said it's kind of like we're doing mileage on cars with our bodies, it's like that the day the lunch truck or the coffee truck comes in, that's like the oil change. Like, let's go, all new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. Yeah, but I've yeah, I've got so much foot pain. Like I like, ugh, my neck is fucked. Like, dude, everyone, fucked. everyone thinks I'm crazy out here because I religiously rock tim's on set i won't do like the hokas or whatever they're called and i won't do like car hard i'm like full-on tim's like east coast style and i could tell people are just like isn't that heavy or doesn't your foot hurt and i'm just like i'm fine i don't really care right now and, hot. yeah and then there's the occasional like what are those shoes and i'm just like you don't know where tim's are like <laughs> yeah you don't know what the yellow boots are like what the fuck all right we were we were you were just saying you know we're making jokes about youth versus now but let's jump back for a second so i guess what yeah yeah got you into sound or how did you discover it yeah so it's kind of a funny story actually because i completely fell into it you know typical brilliant high school director mind gonna go to college become the next quentin tarantino or whatever like we all were and you're like i need a job so during the Drexel internship program, I interned for a feature film that was shooting in Philly. Nice. A bunch of us just kind of were the film's interns. For, uh, and they just took all the interns and they just plopped them one in each department. And so they were like, you, you go to the camera, you, you go to the grips, Max, you go to the sound department. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, whatever. But I had no interest in sound. Okay. Abs I, I didn't even take... <laughs> I took the bare minimum sound classes in college. I didn't even take sound two. <laughs> but this uh, mixer who was on Big Philly Mixer, uh, was a super nice guy, really helpful, really, you know, just a great, great guy. Uh, I ended up being the boom operator for that movie. And then, you know, he had another movie and he was like, needed a boom op. So he asked me and I'm like, out of college. Of course, I'm going to say yes. Do you remember the name of the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was called... It's it's it was released as a, a buddy story about um, it had uh, Elizabeth Moss in it okay. before she blew up. So it was before Mad Men. Um, the movie right. is nothing. It's just like a weird road trip movie about a singer songwriter or something like that. But it was a nightmare shoot, and they had the interns doing crazy <laughs> stuff like driving <laughs> RVs to set on yeah, like two hours of sleep. RVs. Yeah, no, I mean we, driving RVs. Inter That's crazy. RVs. Like fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm boom hopping in, in during the day. And then once we yell rap, I'm driving an RV through like, you know, the streets of Philadelphia. We smashed cars uh, and not on purpose, not bragging about it. But the interns wrecked some cars, on uh, some side mirrors in Philadelphia because of that shoot, unfortunately. But uh, um, yeah, it was just a crazy shoot. It was. Uh, but yeah, so, so basically... Um, that mixer just started hiring me uh, to be his boom op, and before I knew it, I was like becoming experienced at it, starting to like it, and I was a boom op. So I was like trying to boom op as much as I could. Kind of quickly realized that couldn't really um, boom op forever. I could unless I went union, which was you know because I kind of fell into sound. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to commit to it immediately, uh, which is maybe a, a regret at this point, but made sense at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started mixing. And then before you know it, I'm just mixing. Now I'm a mixer. So it really was a kind of like the producer of that crappy movie that nobody saw. Uh, he just decided my fate with his hand, like, like <laughs> army ants or something. He was like, you're a worker bee. You're a sound mixer. He just pointed at me and it was so. Um, Dude, here, that's here so I am, yeah. fucking funny. Yeah. Cool. So if you're out of college and you're starting to like, you know, dip your toes in these little pools just you know just know that you will fall into them uh which is not a warning but just kind of you know advice i guess Dude, that's how i got that's how i got to producing is like you know yeah. when i was interning i was more like lighting like i came out of college wanted right. to direct like wanted to be on a path to write direct and like doing lighting and uh right. just got with a director that needed someone to help out and fucking just learned it on the way and now that's what i do it's almost the same for me. I know you and I have talked about this before where it's like, I go, go to Drexel with, you know, a little bit of that, like, you know, I'll direct and do something. I like movies mindset turning into a, uh, maybe I like editing because of that storytelling aspect, <laughs> which yeah. immediately is shut yeah, down. Yeah. And then, you know, one day it just 
becomes like, hey, can you AD the, you know, the junior project kind of thing? And then all of a sudden, here I am, you know, DGA. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, kind of, it's, I like talking about this because, like, at this point where, like, work is so fucking slow and, like, I feel so, personally, I feel so locked into this ladder. Like, this is the way mm. that I can make a living quickly. Like, if I can just land a couple jobs, it feels like a gambler, like, waiting to, like, yes. get, you know, get a blackjack just fucking once. And then, like, like you know, it's the, odd, that, the odds say it can happen, you know? <laughs> yeah, after yeah. that, I'll get another one at some other point. And like, but you know, you think back and it's like, dude, I just, I fucking tripped and fell into this. Like I was yeah, walking yeah. on a road. I fucking fell into a different one and here I am. And like, it feels so precious, but at the same time, it's also like, it is, but it's also like, it wasn't at one point. Yeah. I don't know. It also kind of um, tricked me into thinking, cause I kind of just assumed that that's what life is. And the, well, it, like, it could be that way. Like, you know, you could apply to a job, work a desk job, work for the same company day in, day out, and that's your life. Or you can move to New York City, you get a job, you fall into this little area, you, do, you meet some people, you have some experiences, and then at some point you get yanked into another area. And then maybe you, you I, I kind of just assumed that at some point I would be doing something else different. I honestly, yeah. I'm a little surprised I'm still uh, a sound mixer to the degree that I am. Because like, at some point, I just, as, as a younger person, I just thought something else would come along. Some, I would fall into something else. And, and it just, life is just a series of kind of stumbling from one place to another. Yeah. Um, which I, you know, which is kind of true, in, in, unless it isn't. Unless yeah. Blackjack doesn't come up, you know. Yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah. a weird life. It's a weird way to, like, think about um, well, yeah, like, it, it's uh, kind of the uh, ups and downs. Yeah, like it's kind of um, it's not to knock what you do as you get older either, but it's just one of those like it all kind of comes together in a way that you almost can't process because it just ha yeah, it's like almost like weird force brought it all together. And when you stop focusing on it from one direction, and you're like, oh, here I am, and I'm still here, and it's and it's working because <laughs> it it is still it still feels like you know that stumble like the 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 road which you stumble down gets narrower it's not like like you get the more you sound mix the the less likely you are to do something else but it's still like sitting and waiting for someone to call yeah i know things still fall on to you like up until last year like every job i'd ever had just kind of landed like just landed in my hands yeah. and like now it's it's like you know the thought the the thought process is like oh there's no work like no one's calling so it's over and then you're like right. and then a job comes up and you're like oh no i got a blackjack and then you're like yeah, yeah. but this is not i cannot rely on this like should i jump ship and then you're like no because i i'm good at this and if i jump ship i'm going to have to make less money and then it's going to be the same problem mm. and then or I, or I, like i have a really good job that i like and i don't want to just abandon it because there's a bad streak of bad luck. Yeah. yeah you know, then, like, like to use the gambler analogy to continue that, you know, like, do yeah. I just hold out? Do I just keep, is, is, if I wait one more week, will I land the biggest job in the world that will save my year? Uh, yeah. It's just a strange way to live. But, the, but you, in the back of your head, that whole time is still that thought of like, just cash out and go back to the room. And, yeah. and, and it's so fickle. I mean, I, I had somebody I work with a lot who hires me a lot. And there was a camera person that came on who I actually worked with before. And I was like, oh, hey, nice to see you. And he was like, oh, hey. And, and he was fine. Like, he's, he can be a little annoying sometimes, but like, whatever. And then the next time I was on set, uh, the guy I work with was like, oh, yeah, that camera operator. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He's a little weird. And then and, that's like, it. never going to hire him again. And now in your head, you're like, oh, like, right. John's weird. <laughs> or also, like, I'm glad you don't think I'm weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because Dude. like this guy is this guy represents like thirty percent of my yearly income, and it yeah. could have represented thirty percent of that guy's yearly income. But for some reason, he just kind of gave off a vibe that the guy who hires people was like, eh, yeah, ass. I, yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize how truly of a gig worker 
situation we're in like this whole industry is like we're we're gig workers the majority of our positions it's not a contract nine to five stable thing and to some degree for a lot of us as crew your resume really kind of means shit it means i know what i'm doing like fundamentally but it really is about our version of like a nepotism almost like i know that word's more negative but you know it really is the like word of mouth it's that like if i had a good vibe with you and we got the job done well together then that's it you're now going to have your info sent to others and i'm calling you again it's it's kind of crazy how that's priority and i guess it makes sense in some ways when it's like you know 15 hours together but it's also like that why is that like the key you know Dude, yeah, yeah. I spiral out so much thinking about, like, why I'm not getting calls. Like, it's yeah. so fucking... Because the mm. answers, like, the answers to why you get calls, like, all feel good. And the answers to why you don't get calls are fucking endless. And majority out of your control. It's, like, decisions you make based on who you are and behaviors that you have that you haven't ever thought about could like step on someone's toe dude i was just on a job and like um the uh i was talking with someone and he was like yeah like sorry i was kind of stiff at the beginning dude like i had just kind of a bad taste in my mouth from the last job i was on with you and i was he was like mm. it wasn't you wow. it was it was someone else on the job that was also production they just like treated us bad and he was like i don't have any bad memories of you but like when i see you i think of that and I was like, yeah, yeah, uh, I was like, one, I was like, thank you for saying that. Cause I fucking know, like I could tell. And like, I'm That's just so I'm, honest. Yeah. And it, it, it was like, it, it like fell out I of mean, him. your brain, your brain can remember like five people and you just got to make sure you're the five people they think of when they're thinking of the per like, cause, cause someone is going to be like, Hey, I need to hire a camera up a first AC or whatever. A sound mixer do you know any sound mixers and they're gonna think like they're gonna have a memory span of like what was the last person i worked with and who was the person before that and that's basically it and so you know there are lots of i've worked with so many of the jobs i get these days are new clients who then mm -hmm. make maybe like two things a year and then i like don't really hear from them again because uh you know a year later it's there. it's it's just yeah at that point there's like a new batch of, of people in front of them or something like that or yeah. like it's like a it's like going to a restaurant or something i don't know no oh, yeah and I then so if, the, if 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 the goal is to make people know your name and put them in the five spots or whatever like you said before you should probably be shameless with self promoting you should be like cold emailing people you should be like hey i just want to remind you i exist hello do you need a sound mixer just letting you know i'm available and like, I'd love I can't bring a myself coffee. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can't and, do it. I just can't do it because if I receive, if I was a producer and I received that email, I'd be like, this guy's pathetic. And I would probably just delete their email. That's what I would do. Maybe I'm shallow. No, I mean, I, that's what you think I, you'd do. But no, I get, I get what you're saying. Cause I have that on my end too. And in, in the sense of like, I have the PAs in mind, for instance, that I love working with regardless of if I hired them or I came onto their show, whatever, you know, it's like, but you have like the same thing. Like you have those X amount of names that you're like, these are the ones I would love to work with if given the chance. And there's always like the person who's like right on the outside ring who are like, you know, every two months or something, just like, Hey, I'm free. And it's just like, you're like, ah, oh, this person, there's nothing wrong with this person, but you're just kind of like, uh, it almost annoys you. Yeah. Like on a personal level, it's just a human trait. You're like, I'd rather you not keep contacting me because I will contact you. But you are still friendly, like, yeah, noted. Thank you. At the bare minimum, at the very least, it's just it doesn't seem to work. Like, but but I, I think it's like with YouTube videos, you know, you know, if you it they have inf statistical information to know that if you say the word please like and subscribe, you will get more likes and more subscriptions. But yeah. at the but then you're the thing you're posting the quality of the thing you're actually posting will become diminished, but the metrics work out. I think if you were to email every single producer you knew and just said, hi, I exist every month, I think, I think statistically it would work. You'd work out like with more jobs coming your way somehow, even yeah. though you'd probably piss a bunch of people off. Right. There, it's but like I, at the I, end I of the day, there's myself to do it. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's way more benefits than negative factors, but it does in the moment sometimes feel a little, but I, but I care 
I care about the quality of my YouTube video. I don't want to diminish the quality of my YouTube video by telling people to like and subscribe. Yeah. Uh, You know, (laughs) by the way, like and subscribe or whatever you do. And also, if you weren't sure, it's there. It's there. You know, they didn't move the buttons, but let me tell you where it's been for 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And down in the description below, um, I uh, fucking. All right. So I got some thoughts on this, guys. All right. Yeah. So, as a hirer and a firer, um, I like getting messages from people, but I like, yeah. I think it kind of has to be worded a certain way. I don't, yeah, I like, I, I, certain times it's a bit off putting, but I think most of the time, like, I just went through, like, last week or the two weeks ago, I did a whole like blast where, like, Every day I was trying to hit like three or four new people and like one or two people that I was um, had worked with before just because I was fucking I got I finally broke through the wall in my head and um, I sent them out and I was thinking a lot about like the messages that I get. But you don't actually need to tell somebody do can I have work because all you're really trying to do is to make someone remember that you exist and that you I mean that's have the job and that's the key right it's a blessing and a curse like. That, like you, yeah. you when some if I need a boom up, I, there's the, the list is very short, and there are lots of sound people I've worked with over the years. Um, yeah. Maybe I would even like reach out to those people. I can't remember the people from six years ago, you know. Yeah. But if I had a very minimal relationship with some of them, like I do. Yeah, yeah. and I mean now we're all in that same boat now, right? I guess like that the current climate, it seems like union and non-union is kind of like we're all taking turns, almost like you know, like Max, it's your week. You get to text everyone. Next week, Ian will text everyone. Dude, and on jobs, whenever I can hire, whenever I have, like, a longer job or, like, multiple days on something, I find that I'm, like, rotating PAs. Like, I'll give everyone less days so that I can hire, like, all of the people I like, which it becomes a weird thing. It I don't know. It starts. It just starts to feel like you owe people. Like, when you're hiring, when you right. have work, and when you can hire people and you've had people reach out, it's like, if you, it, you, owe, is, you feel like you, you're responsible you yeah. owe the people you like i mean i know that sounds like a jaded way to say it, but let's be real that's what's that's what it, it's an exchange yeah exactly it's an exchange it's kind of like we're trading whatever you want to call it i don't know acts of service favor friendship you know what i mean imply the words of the situation and it's like i owe you this in a way and then you know whether or not you keep it in mind is up to you you hope that that's how it we're all kind of considering all these things, you know, I mean, I, I, I feel like it's a, it's a vibe market yeah. in mm-hmm. a way. Like, you know, you do something, you, you're cool with somebody and you hope they're cool back. And you hope they remember you. It's just, it's a, it's just a weird kind of emotional, uh, because our lives are so dependent on these jobs and we love doing what we do. And yet our job is also really challenging and hard. It's just like a mess of of considering like you can't make a rational decision about it. You really if you're trying to consider it to yourself like, well, what's the rational thing for me to do in yeah. this situation? There's there's really no winning. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's just, just a mess. Act- it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. The answer is always action though. And that's like what I've been trying to tell myself is like the answer is almost never do nothing. My answer is always usually like is usually do nothing and it is the wrong <laughs> answer. <laughs> I, I know that for a fact. Like you are 100 percent right. It's a very good, you know, insightful yeah. thing. It's, you, it's better to text somebody, uh, "Hey, how's it going? What's up with you?" than to do nothing. All right. So if we're talking vibes, I mean, the vibe, the vibes lately, I'm sure for you, Max, are probably similar to what you know I've talked about a lot, which is like union, non-union. It it feels as if there's yeah, a yeah. shift happening right now for whatever we want to blame it on. So it's like. Work yeah. is less. It puts us in these uh, thought processes a little more, unfortunately, right? It's like, all right, Monday, Tuesday, I'm going to beat the shit on myself in my room. But Wednesday, it's like, right, all right, right I got to right. email someone. And we're all right. in this cycle. That is the like, schedule. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you throw in <laughs> yeah. coffee in between. You know, you throw in your favorite restaurant or gym. Your one hobby that you're like, I'll go, I'll go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, Make, make yourself, yourself do it. For me, it's Monday. I can like let myself off the hook because Tuesday I can do it Tuesday, and then when I don't do it Tuesday, Wednesday's the day that becomes the stressful day. Yeah, Wednesdays and then are, yeah. yeah, and it's like we because all have people stop look. People stop looking at emails on Thursday, dude. That's the thing. Like, so and then yeah. I, I'm like, oh well, I shouldn't email anyone 
Thursday because it's too <laughs> so close to the weekend. Monday, yeah. It, yeah and, like, well, I'll do it Monday, though. I'll do it next th Monday. Thursday's basically Monday. Friday. Exactly. And Friday's Friday yeah. night, which means it's already Saturday morning, which means I'm going to sleep in <laughs> Sunday. So I'll talk to them Monday at 8 a.m. Like, you know, you already. But Monday, I don't have to do anything. Monday, I don't have to, I don't have to do anything because it's Monday. I can just do it Tuesday. Guys, yeah. I got a whole week I can, ahead like, of me. I feel a panic in my chest just talking <laughs> about this right now. Yeah. Like, but... this is a cycle. I've, I've been spending most of my time while not working trying to eliminate this cycle and hearing it like laid out by two voices at me. I'm like, oh, it's real. <laughs> yeah. again? Wake um, up, Ian. Wake up. At least I'm not alone. <laughs> at least I'm not alone. But then, I, but then I'm like, well, wait, wait, wait. What month is it? You know, it's like we just fly by with this yeah this. the union strike oh. just started in like june 23 what is it july oh it's march 24 <laughs> yeah dude Ugh. but anyway so all right so the point i'm trying to get to is like the, yeah so the vibes have been the same for everyone it's like we're going back and forth with this juggle of like we love what we do but we're gonna sound like we don't because we're there's a lot of headspace going on right now with a lot of time off union and non-union connected in some weird way right now that doesn't make sense yeah so you have to address the negative vibes, which we're doing to a degree here, which is fair. But let's go with how are you keeping the good vibes going? So what are you doing with your free time to kind of avoid these, uh, avoid the work outlook? I just laid it out. I think I just laid it out. <laughs> oh. No, but what, honestly, what, what makes it, it does feel really important to hear because we're all in our little isolated bubbles to the most, for the most part, especially me as a sound mixer. I don't have a, like, I don't get boom ops very often. I'm usually like an, a department of one. Um, I'm not working with a lot of other people in, within my department. And so I don't really have like vibe checks with other sound mixers that often, or even other union slash non-union people. And, it, and going back to what we were saying earlier, where, yeah, you know, someone just emails us once a week, once a month, whatever and then that we get more jobs and that just has happened for the past 15 years and that's how we've like been able to work in this industry and then suddenly in the past like six months or so something feels dramatically different to yeah. me and like to hear other people say no like it i feel there's something weird yeah. going on or like i'm yeah. things are really slow for me because the other problem is that you kind of have to project that you're doing well as a form of self-promotion is that if you project you're doing really well, it'll make you more enticing to be hired. Which is so aggravating and stupid because the, the reality is we're all not doing well, but no one wants to hear all that, which is fair. But it's also like, why do we have to put on the like smile all the time? It's like, why can't we just be in the middle of like, this fucking sucks. Anyway, you want to get coffee? <laughs> Dude, yeah, and it, it also doesn't help bring us all up together. I mean, we should be working. To, I mean, it's, it's not a very union mentality to have of just like, I'm going to kind of make myself look good at the, at the, you know, as we all sink together. It's, um, yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, the, it does. So, yeah, I, it does feel like there's been something kind of different since the strikes. Since yeah. the talks of the, the, strike, the strike is the, the ending. Yeah, the strike is somehow the, the catalyst or start of the domino, but it's like that's just because there's something we can point to, right? But it's almost like it's almost like regardless of your political belief, the whole COVID outlook. It's like you can yeah. start with one thing, but it's like look at every aspect right. of America that changed, right? It's like which one do you really point to first? That's your opinion, but here we are. And it's like, all right, right. Well, what the fuck do we do now? <laughs> let's stick with self promotion, but let's go full 100 good vibes now because i want to hear about i hear you've got some fun hobbies oh the fucking drinking game dude tell us about the drinking game tell us about the drinking game uh yeah so i used to make um i'm like super into board games um yeah. board games are the best yeah they're great uh especially in a time where being in the same room with people is a luxury <laughs> yeah. but yeah i i so i used to make these little games just for fun uh and one of the ones I made was a super complicated, highly involved, kind of like uh, the Cones of Dunshire esque uh, drinking game with just, um, I wanted it to be a, a really complicated epic, because, because drinking games are so silly. They're so stupid. They're just like a deck of cards and you pull one out and you just like drink. Yeah. And I was like, what if we made an intellectually savvy game where you have to be really smart? but then you're dumbing yourself down the whole time you play it. That sounds like a recipe for hilarity. Uh, okay. So yeah, I was just like making these, it actually started, um, I made a RPG beer pong 
which was beer pong, but with like Final Fantasy characters. So you'd have like Wait, different RPG abilities. This is getting pong. into some nerd. So 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 you were kind of doing nerd like shit. You don't. I mean, I love nerd shit. You were doing like a essentially like, uh, like if you were doing like paper and pen D and D role playing, but you're in beer pong sense, right? Like you're... the name RPG beer pong is deceptive and not accurate, but it was really more like Final Fantasy class, uh, beer pong. So you could have like your your white mage that would heal cups for you. You'd have like your uh, <laughs> beer zerker that would you know. You know, you did you have the bard? Did the bard it, sing all you night? Hit one and three of them yeah, go away. I, I around had it. them yeah. all. I had I had them all. It was like you know the if you make someone's cup, they drink two, but then you have to drink one of yours. Just like simple little stuff like that, just to Holy try to make shit. this bizarre like fantasy themed uh, power oriented beer pong game. Okay, um, which was a hit amongst my friends. Uh, everyone was trying to play RPG beer pong, um, and then. I, uh, I took kind of that mentality and, and applied it to a more complicated kind of epic, big, rule-intensive board game, which I named Pool of Cahal, um, which is, you know, it's a game that takes itself very seriously in a way that's hopefully very funny. Okay. But yeah, I'll show, I'll show a, I got a copy of the box here. I made like a... Yeah, yeah. A, so you have I a, made, wait, you have a full-on like, game then. You're, it's not even just a, it's not a matter of just like... like a, I made a prototype that was basically basically you could order a copy and I would just have it printed and you just pay me what it costs to get printed. Wait, so wait, like wait, this is the role playing one or is this a different one? This is the board game, the drinking board game. Um, not beer pong. I, not beer pong. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm trying is, to just clarify which game. game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because I had made the the beer pong game. Um, People kind of were already ready for a fantasy drinking game. Your audience game was primed, with, dude. Yeah. They wanted to see. Yeah, it. that was the setup. Um, <laughs> because I was playing board games and then like making some little board games, and and this just felt like the natural progression. Okay. Um, but dude, it fucking yeah, looks so sleek. It's so wild. It looks like a like yeah. I had, I had it looks like a Hasbro I game had, or some shit. I had my sister, uh, so I did. I did a lot of the artwork for it and stuff. Um, but my my sister did a lot of the uh, artwork too and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's basically it's like a three hour game, and you end up drinking. Oh, that's what I want to show you. Um, the cup. Yeah. So it's, it kind of it kind of it revolves around this idea that you have. These are like your hit points. Does the does the cup come with it or or? There... Well, here's the thing. Like, I don't sell this game. Uh, okay, it's not for sale per se. I don't. Know, I heard you say prototype, and so I'm like, I don't know. It might be. <laughs> Dude, leave the industry I wanted, and make I mean, this game. I sell wanted. To to, I just made it for fun. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I made it for fun, and then I was investigating like what it would take to have it like a series of it released and like sold. And at the end of the day, it's just there's so many components. There's so many. Um, I'm just gonna like move my laptop over just to give like a little flash yeah, yeah. Of, of, of like what we're looking Dude. at. Dude, like there's <laughs> just a little flash. I, he, like you a think flash. he's about to pull out one more card? Like you know. So if you get no, this. <laughs> He's got the felt on the table, dude. <laughs> there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on here, uh, and it, and you need and it just kind of was produce okay. all the different things. You need vendors for all the plastic and the paper and the printing. Like... It's it's also unmarketable because it is a game where you. I don't know about drink. that. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to drink. You could play the game without drinking. Okay, so if you had to summarize. The gist of what the game is about what would you say so so you're kind of navigating through this uh cavern uh and you're trying to uh collect these crystals everyone has these like specific crystal locations that they have to try to get to and you're exploring these little cavern tiles and underneath the cavern tiles or you can either acquire potions or like armor that like makes you um stronger you're going to be running into like monsters that you fight you know some some bloody marys perhaps some uh eight kegged freaks uh and to fight these monsters you have to like use power and then once you use that power you have to drink your beer to that power marker but then sometimes you have armor that lets you like do special stuff 
Uh, and then you can also fight each other. So you're in the cavern and you're like going around each other and you can attack each other. And then you're like waging how much do I want to drink to how much they want to drink. And if you drink more then you win uh, and then you can steal their shit. And the, it's just it's great. It's an awesome. It's so much fun. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh man. Wait, so what what is 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 the objective kind of like a scenario then like like a D&D or? It's just it's just acquire five crystals and then open up the portal to the uh, heavens of sin, I believe it's called. <laughs> yeah, there's like, but there's there's also there's like the sins of the crystal, uh, where every crystal you get, a new rule applies to you, where like you have to do like a funny voice, like a funny accent. Once you get to the third crystal, there's like, um, classic. I for. Okay. You know, the, yeah, kind of classic drinking rule classic, stuff. Like, like if you Captain don't do Shithead these, rules. yeah, like kings. If you yeah. don't do them, then you lose a a, a a drink point, and you have to drink. Okay. A drink. Um. And you're and you're uh, saying you're not selling this. <laughs> I mean, I just don't. I'm just. I'm. It's a lot of work. I'm but a I genius. Can... <laughs> I'm, a I'm a genius, and I'm an artist. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not good at self promotion, and I'm not good at marketing. And if anyone listening to this right now or watching this wants to contact me and be like, "Yes, I'll sell your game for you," I'm happy to do it. But I, I couldn't really figure out a way to get. If if people knew about the game and they they wanted a copy, like I would I would have it printed for them and I would send it to them. And I mean, and I do have some people that I know that got really into it. It and might happen like, now. Keep getting copies of the game. I hope yeah. so. I hope so. But yeah, it's, I mean, at the very end of the day, I got to a place with it where I was a little sad that I never, you know, sold it to a million people. But I'm just happy I get to own it and I get to play oh, yeah. it. At the end of the day, it's kind of just for me. And, you know, I love having people over and, and, and we, I've played it a, a many times. My cards are sticky. Let me put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> the, the that means it was been... success. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's such a fucking fun thing to have taken all the way through. Like you really brought it all the way. Like that's so fucking fun. I I mean I'm not knocking at all. Like I love this, but I just I love the idea of like when they're first learning it. Like if you just throw some of the keywords at them, like yeah, I'm just trying to be safe. You know, once you open the portal, we can't leave. It's like wait, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I know. Like, part of the fun of the game is watching the looks on people's faces as you tell them the rules. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I remember you. Cool. Yeah. Well, well, dude, yeah. fuck yeah. Right. We'll be well, in awesome, touch man. about playing it was great this talking game. to you guys. Yeah. Gotta stream it. This is going to be yeah. fun. Thank you, Max, for coming on. Oh, this is awesome. Right. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Of course, thanks. All right, see ya. Got you. Got you later. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's uh let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back with Connie's Corner. Hell yeah. All right. Connie's corner we'll be right back all right guys cameras are on we're all here we're back with connie for connie's corner what's up man what's up boys how we doing i would just wanted to say connie your eyes are fucking blue dude you got some blue you got some blueberries in that head of yours they match your shirt and your hat i'm red white and blue right now <laughs> Patriot, absolute patriot, patriot. Um, so yeah, man, I caught a little bit of the end of Max. Shout out to Max, dude, with just what we need another uh white guy with a red beard on the show, right? <laughs> hey. All right, am I being replaced? Oh, not man. yet. He's much better, he's much more insightful. How long, than me, so. how long is your contract? Because then we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll have to <laughs> talk. I was, yeah, well, I. I do Once need to be reimbursed. Yeah, I got to yeah. be reimbursed for all those flights um, for all my fam all my friends and family that I brought out to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Naturally, naturally. Yeah. We'll we'll cover it later in the residuals. Because they don't have online. Well, yeah, well, have profits online. are waterfall for this. The producer's pot is 50% of the whole thing, but okay, it much, doesn't sorry. come until we make our money back. And You got to get your nut. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Once I really want to... I really want to check out uh, my uh, my buddy Max's uh, board game. That sounds mad cool. Oh and, yeah, uh, no, we'll definitely be uh... super res super respect for him for uh, making that. That's really cool. I'll check that out for sure. Dude, yeah, we got it. So let's get into it, right? So oh. last week you assigned us uh, City of God. So that's yes. the movie we all went and watched. I know we've uh, we've talked about it off camera in a sense. I think all of us have just like whether or not we've seen it before or, you know, school or whatever, but 
here we are, you know, in our thirties looking back at it. So start us out. I remember I remember I saw it uh parts of it like probably collectively twenty minutes while super high in an attic. Like probably like my senior year in high school or something, but and have always said to myself, like, oh, I gotta watch that movie. I gotta watch that movie. Cause I know it's like uh super, super well regarded. But uh I uh I think it mostly lived up to the hype. I didn't wanna I like uh it starts out with that little chicken, right? Mm-hmm. Which I thought was um a good little metaphor, like ah, oh, these people are just uh chickens running around, being hunted, they're indispensable. Um, and I just looked up right now, how many chickens do you think we eat or kill rather at least in the U S every single day per day? What's your number? Kill per day. Mm-hmm. I mean, let, let's start low and it's probably higher. And I'm going to say 10,000. I'm going to say that, that might be the worst against I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh. I'll eat. I'll eat ten thousand wings today. Me, go ahead, Ian. Well, there's, oh, okay. It's not ten thousand. I'll give you a hint. It's more than ten thousand. It's eleven thousand. Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. How about twenty-five million, bro? <laughs> we kill twenty-five million a day. Yeah, bro. It's no problem, no issue. You think about it. How the U.S. probably has almost four hundred million people. So you probably eat a chicken every eight days or whatever that Bro, comes I have chicken out every to. single day. I have like a pound of chicken every day. Yeah. I'll eat a whole chicken right now. Dude, yeah. a pound of chicken's like half a chicken, you know? Like that's fucking yeah. nuts. And it's a and it's yeah. like a fake chicken, you know Damn. what I mean? Because it's like these aren't like yeah. real chickens anymore. Like <laughs> Yeah, we made them up. Guess how long yeah. uh, another great point. Guess how long and it, which is why it's also another uh great metaphor to start off with this chicken being chased. And then buy, buy like these high numbers of kids. Like, guess how long it takes? Like the chi- of those twenty five million chickens we kill a- every day. How old are they? Like, that that typical chick. Yeah, exactly. Like, how long for them to reach maturity? Would you say it's it's something insane? I feel like my first thought is six months, but I really think it's like three months. I think it's like two weeks tops. It, George, your your guesses are horrible. <laughs> but six weeks, six weeks, Holy six weeks, fuck. and it's for sure. So it's like Mine's that closer. is. Not... I was right with the six. I was yeah, right with true. the six. True. Yeah, but he's like, and you know, he's like months and like two weeks to six weeks. I I kind of won that one. Yeah, fair <laughs> I enough. said fair six. Enough. You did. No, you did. You did. But also, uh, Brazilians love uh, to eat chicken. Um, I feel like <laughs> roast roast chicken and fries is like you know that's like the go to like move. So um, I thought, you know, just a lot from a lot of different angles, starting off with this chicken being chased, uh, like made a lot of sense. Yeah. I thought it also it sets the tone for like, you know, where the fuck like what what the fuck the world's like there. Like, uh-huh. They're barbecuing and the chickens are alive at the barbecue and then yeah. they cut them and fucking. But and yeah. That that right there is part of why I actually love this movie, because I feel like it's so both rare and hard for a movie to make an environment feel like a character. Like you always will notice the setting in a movie, but you know what I mean? Like that, that opening with the jarring cutting as well. And it just basically not even letting you know who the main character is. If they're even in any of these shots yet, it's like that from that moment on, you have two hours of knowing like whether you agree with this or not, that Brazil is a character versus like it takes place in Brazil. And it's like most yeah. of the time it just feels so cheesy in other movies. Yeah, For sure. It's well, like this shit won't happen somewhere else. Like it's like it has to be here. It's a good point, George. They also say the main character in the show The Wire is the city of Baltimore. Yeah, I mean that's, that's a, a perfect bunch. example. Um, I also I bought the movie on Apple for five bucks, so I own it now. So <laughs> I did the um, same thing. So I, so I can go ahead and go back to it. But uh, to your point, George, where it's like um how like the main character is kind of like the setting so i was watching it and i was like is it really my fault because i don't really know like what's going on like who's warring against who everything kind of blends together but kind of i think that speaks to the chicken thing once again it's just like yeah it does doesn't even matter bro like uh this war is going on now they don't even remember like why it really started of course you do have like uh carrot and uh 
Lil Z, who are kind of the figureheads of the two sides. But it, as a viewer, at least for me, I was kind of like, wait, who's who? Like, what's going on? And that that kind of um, goes back to the the setting being a character. Yeah. And once again, to the chicken, it's all about the chicken. Yeah. All about the yeah. chicken. <laughs> I mean, one movie you and I talk about a lot off camera is a Bronx tale where it's like in that same sense of just like we could re- tell this movie, you know, five sequels worth of this movie, different factions every time but it's really just like here's just another tale so it's like it matters but also doesn't you know it's like this is their setting this is just the type of so to say underbelly world it is and it's like that's it we're gonna give you the slice of life of their story and it doesn't even matter in a way and these people will be forgotten in their world it's just another bronx tale it's just another brazil tale I did see some, uh, it's funny you say Bronx Tale, because like, at least in the beginning, it does have that kind of like Bronx Tale, like Italian-American uh, mafia setup of like, and that was Johnny. He was the fucking, he was the best yeah, baseball yeah, 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 yeah. player. And then, and then there's Frank Frankie Fastfingers. Yeah. He was the best in the neighborhood at this. Like, there and was that's... definitely at least a little bit of influence, or I don't know about influence, but at least like similarities there with like... Uh, that, yeah, that I mean, there might be influence. I mean, of course, there's influence from something, but I would, I would say that is probably the best like narrative tool to use for these type of stories, right? Like whether or not you actually make the setting feel like its own character that shows how good or bad you did. But it's like that type of tool of just like we got to kind of follow our like innocent anti-hero of sorts and be like let them kind of tell the story because it's like that just yeah. seems to be from a movie perspective the easiest way to be like i'm sucking you in here we go because this is not relatable to you otherwise yeah. because it has to be from a, like a a point of view that is relatable yeah. like if you're from the point of view of the dirt like if you're living with the dirt like it's just too much it's too heavy it's like you don't need to be in their mind i feel like international movies just excel at doing that like we want to tell you this yeah. weird slice of life but make it kind of relatable it's nice that uh also it's kind of coming from like yeah. this kid who wants, to, who wants to be a reporter a photographer yeah which is and a know- job where speaking of with all the movies we've done it's like oh here's something that's not that old but it already is like like to be a newspaper reporter now i also like how they're basically like you go into yeah. the slum and get me spider-man like, <laughs> they're basically sending the kid out like i need pictures of the spider-man i didn't even think about yeah, it that's yeah. exactly that yeah. type of scenario yeah. yeah i just gotta confess i only got to the part where um where, where benny, benny dies the movie's structured so weird i feel like i watched like an hour and a half of the movie and then benny dies and i was like oh, oh now, now we're in act two i feel like i was okay. like what the yeah. fuck is going you know on? what's actually funny though oh. ian is his death is actually the start of Act Three. Oh, really? What? Because Act One is kind of so like the long. world. Yeah, sure. Act Two. Yeah, well, Act well. Two is basically very brief. It's more of like Act Benny is Act Two because it's kind of like everyone's yeah. in like a neutral, like war hasn't happened type of vibe. Whether it's yeah. love, yeah. fight, and, and yeah. it's like a new perspective. Everyone's starting to wonder different things they can do. Like, do I chase this girl? Do I do this hobby? Do I leave this town? But like it's yes. setting you up for that, like everyone always has this moment and there will always be failure kind of thing. So his death starts yeah. to act three because then it just becomes chaotic, like fast cutting, like war, basically. Oh, my yeah. God. They kind of bring them from uh, like when they were kids. And then there's kind of like you said, George, like kind of brief, like, all right, this is kind of like they're sprouting out in different directions. Also, little Z as a kid, his build is so funny. Did anyone notice just the way he's built? Like, he's built like this, like, lun- he's got like a lunch lady build. Like, he's this little kid with yeah, like yeah, a really yeah. like but prominent, it, like, rump. <laughs> but it, it, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. So funny. It makes sense, yeah. though, because it's like, it's weird because it's like, he's such a kid. Like, it's such a kid, yeah. but he, I was going to say, like, so young. It, in some ways, this sounds dark, but for American culture, or Western culture, when you see images of poverty children like that it always had they always kind of have that like stomach look yeah. the out in the yep. in the posture belly, yeah. so there's so. that so there's that for that group of yes. audience already yeah. just of like your mental whatever and then also just yeah knowing like the kid want he thinks it's the like i'm tough 
you know, mm-hmm. but it's like yeah. it actually makes you look like you're trying. Like, what is this child doing? Yeah. And also, <laughs> since you saw uh, the end of like what you saw, Ian was basically Benny dying. I thought that was also weird. How um, basically, like they were best friends, and he's like, "Yo, kind of like Banshees at Inishir," and he's basically like, "Yeah, I don't want to play no more." Yeah. You know what else I love too? I love when um, I, eat the chicken. I love without making it forced, just because it's like an actor you like or whatever. I love when they um get you to switch sides about a person like with benny it's like you're not you're not like fuck benny but you have no reason to like him in the story and the moment it starts to shift even you're kind of like rooting for him like they're like rooting for the hometown hero here because you're just like all right this guy is like doing a full change you know like it's cool when they do that when there's still that little bit of that like under voice where you're like but he's equally a piece of shit like he's helping make the decisions while also being like my friends like when he invites the redhead guy on that bike ride and then like dude i was like sure he was gonna shoot him yeah i was like i really thought and then they use that moment to just like shift your perspective of this guy because it's yeah. like he sees this guy and like the, the the narration is like you know when you start to do drugs you get to be in the pocket of the dealers and he like grabs a gun and then he's like, yo, could you go buy me some clothes? You have great taste. <laughs> like, yeah. And then, yeah. And just then like, he's just like yeah. the homie. They do lines off the yeah. mirror. Like, and to, and to then f- fucking. Because yeah, so they're also, they're still so young. Like they don't know which way they're going. It's like, oh, this kid's like a monster. Like he's done all this stuff. But it's like, yeah, but he's like 15 years old. Like yeah. he's a boy. Still, he might be like a really good guy. Like you can't. You know, we don't know yet. Yeah. You know? He's still but, figuring himself out. Yeah. yeah. And in that same uh, idea, I love how it's like, so then he's like, so to say, stealing the girl, right? Then he's kind of mm-hmm. like, and nine times out of 10, when that happens, it turns into the whole like, well, that's now going to be the reason why I'm always acting and depressed this way. I didn't get the girl or I'm going to get her by the end of the movie. And they allow it to just be like natural human, like, like high school for us type vibe where it's like, this is what happened. It sucked for that week. Yeah. But now we're all in the same circle. There's only room for one of those guys, and fucking Lil Z is that guy. Like, you can't have a movie full of people that hate each other. Because then it's like, like, that are petty, because then it turns into fucking Real Housewives. And it's like, in order for it to be a complex, it's so sick. It's just cool. I love that. The subversion of, like, what you'd expect or a simple story. Like, nothing's, like, straightforward. And that that speaks to, like, how much we put how much we like try to commodify everything as a country and like, whether it's whatever it is um, and it seeps into the art, but it also does speak to the fact that also like we are Americans are kind of uh, psychos. So, yeah, you know, maybe it does, uh, you know, there's a little bit of both there. Yeah. Um, All right. So city of God, closing thoughts and rating. I'm going to go with an 8.8 city of God. Let's okay. go. Yeah. Dude, all right. So I, I haven't finished it, but I'm going to say fucking nine. Because, like, uh, maybe nine and a half. I'm going to go 9.5, nine and a half. Because this shit fucking ripped. And it, like, it breaks. It's it's early in the movie. Like, there have always been movies that fucking, you know, challenge form at the same time that they challenge story. And um, they just do it really well. Like it's this shit fucking rocks. Yeah. yeah, I'm throwing it up there as one of the tens on my end. Ooh, baby. All right, so all right. all right, so that was that was City of God. So Connie, what do you got for us for next week? All right, guys, I got an idea. Is that a drum uh, roll? What Joe Rogan? You said? No, no drum rolling. Uh, ah, yeah. drum roll. Okay, uh, drum roll, please. Can you hear it? Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of the movie uh, Coherence? Coherence? No. 2013, it has a 3.8 on Letterboxd, which is pretty high, actually. Coherence, let's do it. Cool. All right, boys. All right, thanks. Thank you very much for yeah. having me. As always, see you later. See you next week, Thank Connie. You. See you next week. <laughs> next time. <laughs> Bomb buckled. Am I gone or what? I just disconnected him again. Yeah, so that's our episode, guys. Um, we'll be back next week. We'll watch Coherence. We'll be back with another guest. Um, as always, if you're watching this live on Twitch, there's links to all our socials as well as Discord. Please follow us. 
uh when this is up on youtube same thing in the description um yeah ian any thoughts dude uh i'm fucking happy to be here happy to happy for anyone watching and and looking forward to continuing this with you brother amen to that man all right then so then uh we're gonna get out of here once again thank you everyone and i'll see you next week man adios send us out dab on a baby send us out bow, 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 bow. Bow, 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 bow. Oh, Why? Oh, there it is. There it is. Bow, 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 bow. Everybody.